Welcome students, parents, and members of the teaching community to Education USA's Basic Orientation Session for 2017-18. This session will provide you an overview to the U.S. University application process. We will describe five simple steps of applying to a U.S. University successfully. You will also have time to ask follow-up questions to an Education USA advisor subsequent to this session. Please pay attention to the critical information provided during the session so we can have a fruitful discussion with you. The United States has become a higher education magnet to the world. It attracts students from diverse countries and from across continents. Education USA is a U.S. State Department supported network of advising centers that provide accurate current and comprehensive information to students, parents, and academicians on U.S. higher education opportunities and the U.S. higher education system. In India, we have seven Education USA advising centers, and we are headquartered in Delhi at the United States India Education Foundation. Across the world, there are more than 450 Education USA centers spread across 170 countries. According to the Open Doors Report 2016 that offers comprehensive, comprehensive statistics on number of international students in the U.S., there are more than a million or 10 lakh international students studying in the United States. Of the million, there are more than 1,65,000 Indian students in the United States, a majority of whom are pursuing science, technology, engineering, or math-related programs at U.S. colleges and universities. Compared to the last year, there's been a 25% 25, 25 increase in the number of Indian students um, who, are, who have gone to the United States. We're second only to China in terms of sending students to the U.S. So let's learn more about the five steps of studying in the United States and also um, uh, about the salient features of a U.S. higher education system. The U.S. higher education system is known for its quality. Uh, so the U.S. is the educational magnet of the world, and it has some of the finest universities of the world. U.S. universities are reputed for their academic excellence, world-class facilities, faculty, and a diverse student body. A U.S. higher education is extremely valued in that it's, 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 it's understood, it's, the, its value is understood globally, and employers prize employees with a U.S. higher education degree. There's great flexibility that an American university offers to students pursuing diverse programs. Students can change, can choose from a wide range of programs, course courses, and electives. <clears throat> the five steps of, of, of studying at a U.S. university is a framework that Education USA has globally put forward to help international students apply to universities in a systematic and organized manner. Step one is to research your options. Step two is to finance your studies. Step three is to complete your application. Step four is to apply for your student visa. And step five is to prepare for your departure. There are different types of degrees offered at, at US higher education institutions. And they're divided in these two different categories, undergraduate studies and graduate studies. Undergraduate programs are offered in areas, uh, are offered uh, in terms of an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. Graduate study, for graduate studies, students can pursue a master's degree, a doctoral degree, or an integrated program. There are diverse type of institutions in the United States, and some examples include community colleges, which are two-year institutions where students can pursue uh, their two-year bachelor's and then move on to, move on to a four-year institution to complete their undergraduate program. There are liberal arts and sciences colleges that offer a wide um, array of subjects and provide students with, uh, with the breadth and depth of education that they desire. Universities are also categorized according to their funding uh, as public or private. Public universities are funded by the state and the federal government. Private universities are funded by private sources such as philanthropic foundation grants um, and corporate funding, among other sources of funding. At this point, at this point, it's very important to note that both public and private universities are very well endowed, and they have the facilities and the infrastructure and the teaching uh, uh, infrastructure available to facilitate your education in the best possible manner. There are essentially three types of intakes. 
There is the spring intake that begins in January, the fall intake that begins in August or September, and then there are rolling admission deadlines. Basically, this means that students can apply to a US university throughout the year. There are two types of deadlines, the early deadlines and the regular deadlines. So the early deadlines are for undergraduate students are known as early action and early decision. Uh, regular deadlines are when majority of students apply to a university. Uh, some graduate programs also have early deadlines. For example, an MBA, which has three rounds of admission, round one, round two, and round three, round one being the earliest. Step one is to research your options. Now, this step is really about finding about what your educational and uh, professional goals are and then working backwards to find a university and a program that will help you achieve your goals. So what do you need to do? You need to start by making a list of criteria about the kind of education that you dream of. What kind of university would you like to go to? Um, how big should the university be in terms of student strength? What should be the cost of attending that university? Is, is this particular university close to the industry base that you're looking at? Um, what kind of industry uh, academia collaborations does this university have? So you need to look at some of these factors and more when you're conducting your research about US institutions. After you've done your initial research using online tools such as College Board for undergraduate students and Peterson's website, gradschools.com for masters and PhD aspirants, you need to research and bring down your shortlist to about 10 to 20 institutions. At this point, it's vital to remember that you need to be realistic while making your shortlist. It's not just um, about having the most popular names on your shortlist or going to institutions where your alumni or your, or your fellow students are necessarily applying to, but finding your right fit. Um, so apply to a mix of schools that include dream, match, and safety schools, which essentially means that you know schools that could be highly selective, moderately selective, and less or less selective. Check requirements. So universities may have requirements in terms of uh, academic scores, GPA. They may have requirements in terms of um, standardized such tests such as SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT. Make note of financial and application deadlines and other requirements. Know your budget. So sit down and talk to your family about what they're willing to spend for your education. And then revise your shortlist based on the financial criteria. Some of the other criteria that students often use to shortlist universities include the, the, the ones listed on this slide. Accreditation being a very important criteria. So if you want to check the accreditation status of a university or it's um, or, or, or you know whether it's accredited by a regional accreditor or, or it's accredited by, by a professional accreditor, accreditation is a hallmark of quality. So it's a quality check that institutions conduct um, uh, through external sources. So if you want to check the accreditation status of a particular university, please go, th go through the CHIA website, the Council for Higher Education, www.chia.org. You can type the name of any higher education, US higher education institution here, and it will give you a list of accreditors who have accredited this particular university. So if you're looking at an undergraduate program in engineering, um, one of the professional accreditors who accredits uh, engineering programs in the United States is called ABET. So if, it's a if a program is accredited by ABET, chances are that the quality of education there will be very high. So degree and field of study, acceptance rate. So how selective is the institution? What is the percentage of students who are accepted at that particular university or college? What is the size of the institution or the department? What is the faculty profile like? Especially if you're applying for a PhD or a master's program, it's important to review uh, the faculty who are teaching that program or who are conducting research in that particular department. Look at financial aid available at that department or at the university. Look at research facilities if you're looking at a research intensive program, such as bi biotechnology. Look at the geographical lo location. It's very important to note that the US is a large country and there are different time zones within the US. And also, it's geographically very, very different. So you need to learn more about uh, the location where your uh, university of interest is based in. 
Step two is to finance your studies. So, so uh, this is not really about funding your education, but this is about planning to fund your education. So uh, one of the first things that you need to do is to figure out what does it cost to study at that particular university. So what are the tuition costs? What are the living and boarding expenses? Uh, what are other expenses, other fee that you need to pay as a student at, at that particular university? Also, there is no one particular cost of studying at a university. Uh, it differs from university to university. And also, the expenses differ from program to program. The cost of attendance of a typical American university could vary from about $25,000 to $60,000 annually. This is the sticker price of the maximum retail price, MRP, of studying at a particular university. Identify sources of funding. Obviously, family-based sources of funding are a huge uh, uh, you know, bank that students um, you know, leverage. In addition to that, there are loans. In addition to that, there are merit scholarships, fellowships that external agencies give. Um, there are assistantships that uh, US universities offer and scholarships that they offer to talented and meritorious students. Reach out to the Education USA Center at USIF, close to you, because we have a we have a gold mine of financial data at our centers, which basically comprises of different student profiles from across the globe, um, their, their um, vital statistics, for example, the test scores, the number of years of work experience, uh, the specialization of their, of, of their interest, and uh, uh, which universities they've been offered admission at, and what funding they've been given. As far as financial aid is concerned, check the university's website for details of financial aid for international students. Uh, financial aid differs from private to public universities. Private universities tend to give more financial aid compared to public universities because uh, private universities have more autonomy in terms of financial aid. But there could be exceptions to this, room, to this rule. Look at the financial documentation required. Check the requirements that of financial document that you need to submit as part of your application. Or sometimes you're requested for financial document documents once you've already received an admission offer. Prepare a list of documents that can be used um, for proving your um, ability to pay for a particular university. Uh, for undergraduate students, some of the determinants of merit and need-based aid include uh, so merit-based aid is basically given to students who are highly meritorious, have academic or other talents and achievements. Academic achievements. So how did you do well? How did you do across uh, throughout your um, high school through the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th? Um, what are your standardized test scores? What are your special talents? What are athletic-based talents that a student has? Does, this, does the student have leadership potential? So have you been a prefect, a sports sub, head or a head boy or head girl? Individual character. Uh, if, how effective are your letters of recommendation that the teachers provide you? These are the factors that are reviewed very carefully when being awarded financial aid on the basis of merit. Need-based aid, however, uh, mainly looks into family income, family need. It's, <clears throat> it's an unbiased assessment of financial statements provided by the student. But please don't be misled into believing that pure need could be a reason why you get financial aid. Often the most meritorious students who also have great need, financial need, are considered for need-based financial aid. Now let's look into... Um, Let's look into uh, funding for graduate school. Funding for graduate school or university is highly competitive. The key, is to, uh, the key to being awarded funding is to distinguish yourself from your peers uh, by thoroughly researching the program and building a compelling application that demonstrates you as a scholar. According to IIE's Open Doors Report, <clears throat> 2016, 36% of international graduate students are financed by, the, by their US universities. More funding is available at the doctoral level than for master's programs. However, there is some funding available for students planning to pursue a master's program. Financial aid could be very uh, could vary from public by public versus private universities. So please bear that in mind. At the graduate level, students could be offered assistantships. Now, assistantships can come in three forms: graduate, teaching, or research. 
they may require you to conduct research, teaching, or administrative responsibilities. They often provide tuition and living costs to students who receive them. Um, this typically getting an assistantship requires um, a good academic standing and an interview and application process with, uh, with a, a faculty member from the department that you're enrolled at. Fellowships are extremely competitive and are given to a very small minority, are given to a minority of students. Um, they could be offered through government, institutional, or organizational sources. A uh, student may be required to conduct research uh, for a degree to, to get a fellowship. It covers tuition and living costs. Step three is to complete your application. Now, this step essentially involves taking standardized tests and completing the application package. Um, so standardized tests are different for undergraduate students and graduate students, and I'm going to talk about standardized tests over the course of the next slides. It's important to register well in time for standardized tests, and based on your scores, you must revisit your shortlist. You also have to report your scores officially to universities that you have chosen to apply to. The second thing you need to do is to organize your mark sheets or uh, transcripts as they're known in the US. You need to get them attested, which means you need to get them signed and stamped by the issuing authority, which could be a school, college, or university. Education USA centers at USIEF also attest transcripts, so reach out to your closest center and check with them about uh, the terms and conditions related to attestation. Another important aspect of your application package are your recommendation letters. Recommenders are teachers, professors, work supervisors who know you really well and can comment about your academic capability. Decide on your recommenders well in advance, get in touch with them, give them adequate time to write recommendations for you, and please do not write recommendations yourselves. The statement of purpose or an essay is a narrative or a qualitative description of who you are as an individual, um, what is your background, why are you planning to pursue a particular program at, at a specific university, and where you hope to, um, what you hope to do after completing a particular program at a US university. So SAT, SAT subject tests, ACT, and AP are the wide breadth of uh, academic standardized tests that students take. The SAT is scored in a scale of 1600. It has three sections, a critical reading, a mathematics, and a writing section. Uh, SAT subject tests are offered in 20 subjects. There are 20 SAT subjects tests offered, including physics, chemistry, math, biology, history. They're scored on a scale of 800. Uh, these tests are taken by students to demonstrate their competence in particular subject areas. So they complement your SAT. Uh, students also have the option of either taking the SAT or the ACT. Now, ACT is scored on 36. And it has four sections, an English section, a math section, a science section, and a reading section. Now, the difference between the SAT and the ACT is that the ACT has a science section, which the SAT reasoning test does not have. APs are advanced state placement tests that students take to earn credit uh, and advanced placement before joining a college. There are more than 25 subject tests available as part of the AP suite of tests. In addition to these academic standardized tests, students are also required to take one of the English proficiency tests. You could take either the TOEFL, which is an internet based test. You could take the IELTS, which is a paper and pencil based test, or the Pearson's test for English. I already talked about this. UG undergraduate standardized tests in the preceding slide. So you can take a couple of seconds to look at uh, the scoring pattern of these tests as is visible on the slide in front of you. When it comes to graduate academic tests, Students could take the GRE. This is really the most popular test. So if you're a humanities student, you take the GRE. If you're an engineering student, you take the GRE. A lot of business schools now accept the GRE as well. The GRE has three sections, the verbal reasoning section, the quantitative reasoning section, and an analytical writing section. 
The GRE subject tests are offered in specific subject areas such as biochemistry, cell and molecular biology, uh, psychology, math, physics, uh, literature in English. These tests are often not required for students to take. But if you are applying to a program, do check on the university's website if GRE subject tests are a requirement. The GMAT is taken by students who intend to do a business program in the United States. If you're looking at doing a professional program in the US, uh, such as medicine, law, or dentistry, MCAT, LSAT, and DAT are, are tests that students have to take in order to get admitted. The application package, as we already discussed, comprises of the application form and the fee, academic transcripts, admission test scores, letter of recommendations by teachers or professors, statement of purpose or the application essay, proof of financial capability, resume, a request for financial assistance in the form of specific application forms, and or an interview. An interview is often some is is a new element of the application package, uh, and some universities um, request candidates to be interviewed by faculty members on Skype or alumni, and or a visiting professor to India. Step four is to apply for your student visa. Now, a student so Education USA works very closely with the U.S. with the U.S. embassy and consulates across India, and we conduct sessions regularly on the U.S. student visa process. Uh, once you've admit, once you've submitted all your documents, and once you've submitted all applications, universities will get back to you about your admission decision. Once you you've got all your admissions decisions, you can accept uh, an offer from a US university, admission offer from a US university, and then um, you know the university will send you what is called the I-20. An I-20 is an official document that is sent by universities to international students. It outlines the, the, the total cost of attendance that you have to pay, any scholarships uh, that you've received, the name of the program, the university that you've been admitted to. Uh, within I-20, students can apply for a student visa by completing an online application form and scheduling two interviews, one at the embassy and one for biometrics at the visa facilitation centers across India. Um, once you're admitted, once you've been, once your visa has been approved, um, you can then attend Education USA's pre-departure orientation sessions. Our pre-departure orientation sessions are power-packed sessions which include alumni, U.S. University alumni, faculty members, Education USA advisors, Fulbright scholars, and other resource people who will guide you about making the most of your time in the United States. Education USA at USIF uh, offers several free and paid services to uh, our, our, our students uh, in India. Um, group and information sessions on US higher education are regularly conducted. Several universities visit our campuses and uh, talk to students about their admission policies, about the overall application processes to US universities. Our, our centers are stocked with, um, are well stocked with, our, our center libraries are well stocked and are available to non-members from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We have the latest standardized test preparation material and other reference material for applying successfully to a U.S. university. We hold mentoring sessions by U.S. universities, alumni, and currently enrolled students. If you'd like to access our paid services, you can take our membership, which will give you access to expanded hours for library and resource use. Um, and primarily, it's going to give you access to an Education USA advisor who will guide you during, uh, who, will, who will do one-on-one -on -one sessions and group sessions uh, with advising appointments for you. Finally, you can connect with Education USA online. Every Friday, we hold uh, Friday webinars, and the link for the webinar is, is flashing on your screen right now. You can also like us on our, face, our, our Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Education USA Delhi. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is www.twitter.com forward slash edusa underscore India. Uh, you can also check, log into our website and check out all the wonderful resources available for you by logging into educationusa.state.gov or visiting www.usip.org.in. 
Um, uh, we also have an amazing YouTube channel where we record and and, and store all our uh, uh, selective webinars and other material that could be useful for students. So please do check out our YouTube channel uh, by uh, going to YouTube and uh, checking out Education USA India. The seven centers in India are located in Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Kolkata, and Mumbai. And as you know, we are headquartered in Delhi. Uh, you can go to our website, usiev.org.in, and sign up. And, and click the link, sign me up, submit your details. Um, we will be then sending you a weekly emailers about all our sessions. You can also reach out to us by dialing in to our toll-free helpline number, which is 1-800-103-1231. Our toll-free helpline number is operational from Monday to Friday, 2 to 5 p.m. And an advisor uh, attends to this, uh, this uh, toll-free helpline and offers uh, quick and brief guidance on uh, the application process and any questions that you may have other than that. With that, it's a wrap for today's uh, basic orientation session and uh, an advisor will join you shortly to discuss your questions and concerns. I would request you to be patient and sit down to note a few questions you may have as a follow-up to this webinar which will be discussed in detail by our advisors. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure addressing you and good luck for your uh, educational plans to the end.